In this video, I'm going to talk about linearization, which is a trick used when fitting models to data. And nowadays, it's possible to fit any function to any model. So you can fit sine waves to data, you can fit power laws, you can fit Gaussians, you name it, you can fit it. In the olden days, like 10 years ago, basically all you could feasibly fit were straight lines. So the trick of linearization was to turn something that isn't a straight line into a straight line so you can fit it. Is it still useful today? Well, it is because, let's say you're expecting something to be a straight line. It's very easy to see if it's not. You can just look along it and see, oh, that's a bit wiggly, or that goes up a bit at one end, uh, or the slope isn't what we expected. Whereas it's much harder to do that if you've got a function that's supposed to be something like this and actually looks like... It's hard to actually know in which way they differ from each other. So it's still useful to know how to turn things into straight lines. So how do you do it? Well, let's think of an example. Um, one from my PhD thesis. Let's say you plot the number of quasars, or QSOs as they're called, these are giant black holes, against their luminosity, how much power they put out. This is generally thought to go something like this. So n equals some constant times luminosity to a power alpha, where alpha is about minus 4. So basically means the more luminous you go, the fewer of these things you find. There are lots of faint ones, not very many bright ones. And let's say you had some data. try to see if it fits it. That can be kind of hard to tell. I mean, you're going to see a curve that goes down sharply, but is it really going down as minus 4 or minus 3? What's the constant? So what you can do is linearize something like this. The way you do that, in this case, you've got something equals something else to a power. So let's take logs of both sides. It doesn't matter whether you do log e or log base 10. Um, as long as you're consistent, let's take log to base e. So you can do log at log n. Take log of both sides. Now your log of two things multiplied together will give you log of k plus log of l to the alpha. So that's log of k plus alpha log l. So what this means is if you plot log n against log l, you should have a straight line of slope alpha and intercept k. So it should look like our plot log n q s o against log l. And you should get something like this. Slope alpha and intercept log of whatever the constant was. And now uh, you can, if, if, if for example, as this fact is the case, the slope changes, it goes something like that actually, you can see they've got different slopes at different ends, which you couldn't have told looking in a diagram like this. So that's one example. Another common case is exponentials. Let's say you're trying to fit a model of the form y equals k e to the cx. In this case, once again, take logs. Log y will give you log k plus cx. Because log e to the cx is, of course, just cx. In this case, you want to plot log y not against log x, but just against x. So if you get 
log y against x this is the log linear plot you will get a line slope c intercept log k that doesn't always have to involve logs let's say for example hello y equals root x over k in this case you can just plot y against root x that's 1 over root k so if you plot y against root x you should have a line of slope 1 over root k so the conclusions by a with a judicious change of variables you can often turn a curved set of data into a straight line If you have power laws, so um, y equals x to the n, plot log y against log x. For exponentials, plot log y against x not log x and there are other situations work it out for yourself the one thing to be careful about when you change variables, your errors will change, so you have to propagate uncertainties through the change of variables. But overall, linearization is a very powerful technique that can allow you to easily fit data and spot interesting things in it.